All right, I'm Andy Fogel, and I got I used to live in Arlington for I don't know five or six years. Um, I still feel like it's even though a lot's changed. Uh, that was 20 years ago, um, almost when I left. Since I've left, um, and even though a lot's changed, you know, I still feel like it's very much home. I got three here. This first one is called Arlington Heights. Triptych Arlington Heights is. At least I believe at the time it was the name of the section that I lived in, uh, right at the intersection of 50 and Glebe Road, um, across from the Thomas Jefferson Middle School and Community Center. We used to have some kind of fair there in the summer, so I used to go to um, ride all these old school roller coasters, um, or not really roller coasters, but rides. And down the street from a sushi place called Fuji, which that changed before we'd even left, and uh, Rabbi Kebab, um, <clears throat> which I think is still there. Anyway, about a mile south of the Boston Metro Station. Um, this is in three sections, and it comes out of me walking our, our late dog, Luna. Um, uh, when I maybe first started getting seriously interested in thinking about at least certain poems or certain parts of poems as landscape paintings. Um, way influenced by Charles Wright and one of my heroes, Eric Pankey. Um, so uh, here's the first section. It's called Last Words on Ivy Street. In fog dawn's light, a treeless yard's thick sweep of green and the next's garish yellow contemplations. What's all this yield? A swelling mist, leftover rain, the pale beat on roofs. Must sound good inside that house. Must be nice to sleep within, to wake the weather, sigh at design, and all but believe. Two, South Old Glebe. That was my specific little street near 7-Eleven. I take the dog out the stairwell door. Stroll the chain link behind. I take the dog out the stairwell door. Stroll the chain link between our building and Duplex's backyards. So dark, so early. The cold's downtrod like an obsession. I plainly stare into a bay window. Soft light, small kitchen, a woman washing dishes. She's being swallowed by the night, and she is its center. <clears throat> Three, uh, second street houses in negative silhouette. That line of roofs, a long lit sky, such pretty desolation and evenings cadenced light, such clean diagonals, clarity of bleakness. When I'm sentimental, they're beautiful or depressing. And when I'm serious, they stun. So either way. Among all these apparent disparities, within shingle seethe and sun's glare, I couldn't have been the one to make up this mind. <clears throat> and this one is called Building 24. That's the building I lived in at 24 uh, South Old Glebe Road. I live upstairs in 305 with my best friend Jeff for several years, and then my wife and I managed to buy a one bedroom um, on the first floor, part 10, 102 or 106, I think it was 102. And it was a great building, um, like truly diverse in a million ways. Um, this is all one long sentence with some wordplay. It's a little bit hard to read, hang with me. All the other buildings, red brick, three stories above ground and one more under. All the others with Christmas lights sooner than here. On each side of the doors, two large dark bushes, a thin atmosphere of gold rain holding in place. The dark leaves out, glitterful and with the living living in them, all gathered around the courtyard. Four benches, trees that green, a hood the center. Hello, neighbor. Hello, hello. We don't know how or why the large roads and their sounds can just hang there in the bare distance just so, 
Solo, we're here and here and hours pass. Many moods, any day, maybe we are ours. This complex together and don't know each other entirely. Here where there is such dusking and the dun's new errors might be faces, ones we've always heard of. Surely we must all be familiar with the unfamiliar, one, the other, as sooner is when one becomes amidst family of family and the lately clear blue sky, the lately cooler weather and unstuck door when today don't like tomorrow and tonight stills today, lates it. So look not to the lack lock. It doesn't know the ties nor the moon in the window, but look to a sound vibration in the body, words made by skin, tooth, and lung, some kind slowing, a holding on a second, a place where one beholds a home, real, graspable, right there, and not as close anymore. I don't really know what the hell that means, but there it is. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, one of my proudest little moments, uh, in my writing, uh, career life, this is Glee Broad. Um, a lot of geographic proper noun name dropping, I guess. And, uh, I was super psyched. This guy, this was picked as one of those poems that was on the buses. Uh, I've still got the, one of the yellow posters, um, that Kim Roberts gave me. And, you know, so I got to do a, whatever, five or 10 minutes, you know, a bunch of the winners got to do at the old Ellipse Art Center, um, where I saw Lee Young Lee read, and I saw this guy, Brandon Johnson read. Um, um, so this is, uh, this is Glee Bro, this is it. Um, I can't remember if I was walking or on a bus, um, or maybe even driving south towards my apartment. Um, but you know, it's just stuff that I saw. Glebe Road. What trees are they from? Behind a bus stop shelter, a boy lies in a puddle of leaves, the heavy color of wine. Steps away under a great yellow fountain. A girl matches her hand to a shard and doesn't pull back. All right. Amen.